Okay, in this video, which uh, feeds off of the week four assignment, we will continue on to week five by finishing up the uh, design that we started the previous week uh, by controlling the typography using Dreamweaver in our HTML slash CSS pages. So we've already added some CSS to our existing page on week four. Uh, let me open that up real quick. We've uh, We've created a header. We have the body of the poem uh, in separate fonts, and uh, we have a footer that we have added. Uh, before I continue on to week five, I'm going to close this file just uh, to leave it there. Week four it should be its own project. We are going to continue with the same file, but we'll publish the changes on to week five so that uh, when uh, the uh, files are graded, week four will be one grade and week four, week, pardon me, week five will be a separate grade. I'm going to right click on week four and tell it to uh, edit. In edit I have options to cut, copy, etc. I want to duplicate, make a duplicate copy of this particular week. So I right clicked, duplicated, and now I have a new week four copy. This is a uh, no good for uh, the site. We can't have uh, spaces in our names. Uh, the hyphen doesn't help. And week four copy really doesn't make much sense when you're going to be looking at three, four, five, etc. So I make sure that I'm on week four copy. It's uh, highlighted blue. I'll click on it again. And the text should be highlighted. I can then go to the end of the text, use the backspace key, and delete the number four add my number five, press enter, and Dreamweaver will say, hey, wait a minute, uh, what are you doing? Do you want to update the links in the following files? Because they already had parents and they had uh, other things that were dependent on them. So I'll say, yes, please update. Click on update. And now I have my week five with its own index and its own styles.css. They're not dependent on these files anymore. When Dreamweaver updated, it made everything self-dependent inside of week five. So when I open up index HTML, it's reading the styles.css inside of the week five folder. Let me go back to just code, or rather design, and uh, let's uh, make the final changes on the page. Before I make any changes, however, I'm gonna go back to source code and just design. I'm going to go into our main index page, that's the one that's located off of the root folder, and I'm going to create a week 5 link. So I'll space after week 4, type in week 5, highlight week 5, and uh, make this point to the week 5 index. I'll publish this so just so that it's saved and ready to go. Say yes to all and then yes. And I'll close that. Back on week five in my index. Uh, let's, let's see. I, I don't know that I particularly care for the hyper poem exercise. Uh, just being out there with a different font and then the world not taking, taking a lesser uh, role. So I think that I'm going to replace the hyper poem exercise title with the actual name, the road not taken. And I'm going to replace the road not taken with the name of the author. So I'll give it a byline by Robert Frost. Now, although we've already made some uh, changes in the type, I'd like to uh, make a couple of uh, final additional ones before we start to add any links, any hyperlinks. Uh, therefore, making this the actual hyperlink poem. I've shown you how to manipulate fonts a little bit. I'm going to go into more detail now. By uh, the road not taken being its own font, and it's uh, right now currently, I do believe this was uh, Gotham. If I go back to CSS Designer and select uh, page header H1, that's this one right here, uh, my text will show me that indeed I'm using Gotham and Helvetica New, etc. Color is currently this blue, and I'll keep the, the color for now. Uh, but maybe I want to change the font style. Uh, you sh I think that this is a little bit too thick currently. If I go back to normal on H1, it might take a little bit off of that. I can make it italic. 
um, actually font weight can make it normal and then it's not so thick there's plenty of options when it comes to changing font sizes and styles and I have added uh, to the week 5 uh, listing some uh, refreshers about this uh, to get familiar with the fonts of the web for example if you go to that link you'll see uh, what the more common fonts that are used out there uh, Georgia Palatino Linotype Times New Roman I'm sure that everybody's familiar with Times New Roman those are these are standard Microsoft fonts Arial Helvetica uh, are the uh, sans serif fonts impact you've seen a lot I'm sure that if you've ever seen a uh, a meme you recognize impact as being the uh, the font that they use comic sans which is much maligned a lot of people don't like it uh, it's it's still out there uh, and then there's the rest of them that Microsoft and Apple made an agreement some time ago and they said everybody gets these fonts for free everybody can use them some of them are sans serif and some of them are serif if you are unclear as to what that means I'll close this um, there is also a link to uh, how to know the difference between a serif and a sans serif font. Basically, the sans serif is the one without feet. Uh, serif has feet, and they explain here what the, what the serifs are. Where these are the feet. These are the little extensions coming out from there. Uh, CSS font families uh, go more into showing you what uh, what variations are used and lots of good information uh, not only with the links that I'm providing but the whole uh, W3 schools site is, is very very useful so going back then to this I want to use a serif font I'm already using a serif font for the byline uh, but I want to use a serif font up here uh, so I'm going to start by seeing what my options are and like I said I want to use a standard font one from the list that we just looked at so that I don't have to go and import a specialty uh, font just yet we'll show you how to do that later for now though I'm going to click on font family while I'm on page header h1 and see what my options are and you can see most of them at the very end I have Seago. Uh but below that there is a little a tab that says manage fonts and I'm going to click on that these are the specialty fonts that I mentioned just now these uh, you can add to your page you won't be able to see them on the design so I'll I'll go over this at a later stage these are basically free fonts from Adobe that you can uh, use on your page uh, things that you don't really see that often this used to be made with graphics but now you can add code to your page and actually use them instead though I'm going to go into custom font stacks and these are the stacks that I already have these are the uh, families that appear whenever I click on font family however ever since uh, Dreamweaver went to 2014 uh, they got rid of some of the old ones like Times New Roman and Arial and Helvetica as the default I'm going to make a new font stack that uh, mirrors those old ones so uh, the one that I'm missing in particular is the Georgia font my available fonts are fonts that are already in my computer and since all those basic uh, website fonts are part of every computer I can go down the list and find them in alphabetical order I'm just clicking anywhere so that I can type in the letter G which takes me to the first font Gabriola not familiar with that but a couple of clicks down there's Georgia I'm going to choose this font and move it over to the stack so Georgia would be the first thing the first font that's selected by the browser when encountering our page uh, the second one if it doesn't have Georgia if it's a computer that's 14 years old or so uh, maybe it doesn't have Georgia installed but definitely it should have Times New Roman so once again just clicking anywhere on unavailable fonts I'm gonna click the letter T get to Tahoma and slide down to Times New Roman I will also select this font I choose this font to go to the left so now in order I have Georgia Times New Roman my new stack list is growing but what if your user is not even using a PC or a Mac uh, instead they're using some sort of a Linux um, environment then they might not have Georgia or Times New Roman but they'll definitely have something else 
And at the very bottom of this list, I'm going to slide all the way down using the elevator. We have the serif and the sans serif, including monospace and cursive and things like that. Right now, since this, these fonts, Georgian, Times New Roman, are serif fonts, I'm going to select that and bring it as the very last thing in the stack. Once the stack is finished, I can click on Done. Nothing happens except that the next time that I go to change my font family, Georgia, Times New Roman, and Serif are now an option. I'll click on that, and now I have uh, more of uh, the font that I'd like to use. I'm going to change the font style from normal to italic, just to give it a little bit of personality. And uh, see what else you could do here. You can do a font variant of small caps so that it uses small capital letters throughout. I don't particularly like that. I showed you normal, bold, and uh, even bolder or lighter. Let's try lighter, see what that looks like. And I actually kind of like that one a little bit better. Font size is currently 3M, and that means that it's uh, three times the normal size. Um, the line height this is already inside a box, so it wouldn't make too much of a difference, except that if I were to give it, let's say, two times its own line height, if I do 2EM, it would then occupy twice the space in one single line. I'm going to leave this as default. Whenever you want to delete any of these values, you can just uh, remove the CSS property by clicking on the trash can at the end of it. This is currently centered, and I'm going to try something different. I'm going to go take this back to the left and maybe maybe just leave it there for now. I could also add some decoration and uh, text decoration you've seen before. Every time you see an underlined word, that's how this is done. You add a text decoration of underline. You could also overline. That's the line over the text. I'm not seeing it here. Maybe if I went to the live view, I could see it. And there it is. I'm going to go back to the sign view and uh, in my decorations I don't want overline and I don't really want underline and I definitely don't want the line through because why I'll just click on for now just none and that's just adding to my code so I'll just take this out altogether and remove that property I'm not going to indent the text let me deselect that I'm still just working up here uh, I do want something though at the bottom of uh, the font. I'd like maybe a rule all the way across. And one way that I can do that is uh, not necessarily through the fonts or the text. I'll go back to my styles and check this out on H1. Page header H1 is this whole box. So I can say, why don't I add some padding at the bottom of this? I'll slide down. To the box inside of uh, layout that's the very first thing that you see so I have my margin which would uh, move things from the left and right that's how we center the page and then there's padding so inside of this box currently there's no padding but if I were to add some space at the bottom and I'll just click here and I'll type in 10 px put it in 10 pixels below you'll see that the box grew because it added some additional space just below that while I'm at the box, if I wanted to add that, add that rule, rather than adding a rule, a horizontal rule across, maybe I can go to the border category and then find where my borders are set. I can set uh, a border around all the sides of the box, on top, to the right, to the bottom, and even to the left. I'm going to pick to the bottom. Nothing's happening because currently you'll see that it's got no width, there's no style, and no color has been added. So if I wanted to actually see the line, let me switch back to live so that I can see what's going on as it as it moves on. I'm still on page header H1. I'm going to go back to borders. I'm going to add a bottom border. I'm going to give it a thin width just so that it's not so uh, prevalent. Otherwise, you end up with a really thick roll across. Style, definitely want to have this a solid line. So it just goes all the way across. You can pick your own. You can do a, a groove, uh, which is just sort of an indentation in, inside of there. You can use a dotted line. You can use multiple styles. You can use a hidden line, which doesn't make much sense, but maybe some people use it. I'll click back on solid. 
I want to uh, keep the same uh, color as the font so just as reference I'll go back to my h1 font and see what my color was there I'm gonna copy that um, pressing control C to copy I'm going back to the border finding then the color definition and pasting pressing control V and now I have a a rule or rather a border underneath the box that's the same color as the font I'm going to go back into design and I can see that the line is there. My byline is a little bit too big. It's my H1 inside of page main. So I'll find that in my styles.css. Here's page main H1. My text is currently set to Baskerville, but since I've already introduced a different font up here with Georgia, I'm going to try to stay in the same family. I don't want to use more than you know, in any particular page, you know, when I use more than three on a simple page like this, going beyond two doesn't make much sense. So I'll switch the font family from Baskerville to Georgia and make sure that if my font style is italic, I am going to see about the font weight being similar to the one up there. So font weight, I'll make this normal. Once I do that, uh, it looks a little bit large, too large for the byline. I mean, it's important, but uh, it's sort of uh, overtaken the road not taken title. So I'll make it just a little bit smaller and uh, I'll find the uh, font size. Uh, I'll check out the EM and see what uh, I think this should be somewhere around two since it's an H1, but I'll, I'll see what one does. One is kind of small. I'll change that to two. That's what it was before. I'll use 1.5 instead. And I think that that'll work okay. I can make it bold. I could uh, make it, uh, I could make it underline. I could do lots of things, but I think I'll leave it there. I'm happy with the rest of my text and the text at the bottom. So now that we are finished uh, coding all this text, I'm going to make sure that I publish. I'm going to click on file management and put this file click yes to all and yes I can go back to my browser load up my page and there's week 5 click on week 5 and there's the road not taken by Robert Frost step on down my copyright page I'm done doing the basic design finally with the fonts and, and the, the rules and all that and the next thing we'll do is uh, start to add some hyperlinks.